Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to the A Little Less Fear podcast. I am your host for the show, Dr. Lino Martinez. Oh yeah. Welcome back, everybody, to the A Little Less Fear podcast. I am so excited to introduce Chelly. Chelly, thank you so much for coming to my show. Welcome to the A Little Less Fear podcast. Well, thank you for having me, Lino. You're welcome. You know, I love your name, Chelly. My roommate's nickname is Chili, so it, so it sounds very familiar. And the reason I call him Chili is because we're, especially during the pandemic, we do nothing but chill, you know? So it's like, we come up with these nicknames and I was like, hey, you're Chili. So when I saw your name, I was like, Chelly, Chili, that's awesome. It's like right aligned to what the name that I'm used to hearing every day. Welcome, Chelly. Well, thank you for having me. I'm very excited. And just to correct, it's actually Shelly, like S-H. Oh, wow. <laughs> See, here I am putting my own mix into it. Shelly. That's okay. <laughs> How beautiful. What a beautiful name, Shelly. Shelly, I'm going to have you choose between three words, and from there, we're going to start our discussion. Fantastic. Okay, the first one is PTSD, as in post-traumatic stress disorder. The second one is disability. And the third one is life coach. Wow. Um, I don't know how to choose because they all relate together, but I will choose PTSD. And why is that? Why PTSD? I think PTSD um, because it is a disability. It is something that has affected my life and it's something that I have healed from and ended up, you know, starting a career with life coaching because of it. So do you see how it's, it's like kind of thread nicely, wow. so many different things, but if you want to know, um, if you want to know how, do you want to know how I got PTSD? Absolutely. How did you get PTSD and, um, how did you know it was PTSD as well? So I got PTSD almost, uh, 13 years ago from a, a multi-car collision and it was a, a multi-car collision that I was trapped in for five and a half hours in 27 degrees. Wow. And so you were, you were awake and you were aware when you were trapped for that long? I was in and out of consciousness. Okay. Yeah. And the, the ambulance left me, the police left me, and there was a lot of loss of care. And my family wasn't there for me also. So uh, my family had actually came and they took me out of the car and they brought me to, they brought me home and the very next day, they put me on a plane to go back to my house, which was in North Carolina. And the only person I knew was my realtor. I had just moved to North Carolina and that started, you know, me going to doctors. And it was actually the, the doctors right then when they said, you have a very serious concussion. And I was diagnosed right, right that first week, I think, with acute PTSD. And acute PTSD doesn't necessarily last long term. But then for years later, it stayed with me. It stayed with me primarily because I didn't have the support. I didn't have the... I didn't yep. have the people in my life to help me heal. Shelly, for, for listeners that don't know what acute PTSD is, could you explain that? Um, there was a lot of anger and outbursts and raging and um, lots of uh, uh, fear and anxiety. And I would have, I would have, uh, not dreams, uh, I, night I lost terrors, me. night terrors. Thank you. I, I had horrible night terrors where I would wake up and the entire bed would be drenched. Sweat. And when I went to the doctors, I would just be screaming. I, I would, um, I, I didn't understand. I also lost the ability to speak. So it, it affected me, not just with the PTSD, I lost the ability to speak and I, all of my words would come out almost like slur. And that was part of the concussion. And 
my daughter and I played some sort of a game like with my hands and where I would start spelling things almost like sign language. And she was the only one who can understand me, but she was going to school and I was going to doctors. How long did that last for? How long were you in that state? That lasted for a couple of years, actually. That's a long time. Yeah. And because of that, I ended up staying in my house for several years alone. So I, I didn't let anyone in. I didn't go out except to go to the doctors. And nobody came to help me. What were you thinking at that time? Did you think that was going to be permanent or were you kind of just rolling with it? I thought this was my life. I thought my life was over. I thought there was, there was nothing else other than pain, anxiety, stress, fear. And then, and then I found yoga. Wow. <laughs> you know, I, I found, How did you find yoga within that state of trauma? I, um, I went for surgery because I was injured on my, I was injured on my shoulder. And a year after the, a year after the accident, I went for surgery. And another year later, I was in physical therapy for a whole year to see if, you know, I was going to gain motion and to see if it was going to get better. And they declared me physically disabled in my arm and they cut off all of the, the insurance. They said, okay, well, you're physically disabled, so you're not getting better. It's been a year already. We've done what we can. And we're going to just you know, send you, send you off into the world without any medical care. And I said, there's gotta be another answer. Yeah. And, and I opened up my iPad and I looked up you know, the exercises that I was doing in PT, but it came, what came up was yoga. And I started doing some of these exercises at home. And then I thought, maybe I can do it one-on-one -on -one with somebody. So I reached out to someone in my community and I asked, do you think you can do one-on-one -on -one with me, but I can't do an hour class because my body can't handle it. Mm -hmm. And she did a half hour class with me and we did that for six months. And once, once we did six months worth of classes, I was able to go to a class because I couldn't even, I, I had agoraphobia and, you know, um, I, I couldn't be around people. I couldn't go out of my house. I couldn't go around people. And finally I was able to go into a class. It was wonderful, but then they locked the door. You know, they locked the door of the yoga room. Which uh -huh. I, didn't, I didn't know. And I had this horrible anxiety. Mm -hmm. And, but then I learned to be safe in that room. And I learned how to breathe and learning how to breathe was probably the biggest gift that yoga gave me because yoga is not about the movement it's more about learning how to control your breath learning how to allow the breath to flow through your body when you're in those states of anxiety yeah and it did more for my emotional state than my physical state but it also helped me learn that i can push myself as far as i want because i'm in control I don't have to listen to doctors or PT people. Right. And when I feel angry or anxious, I can, I can roll out a mat and I can feel safe and do what I want on that mat. So I have a mat in my house. I have a mat in my car. And people who know me, when, when I get anxious, because I still get anxious sometimes, I'll go into tree pose. Yeah. I'll twist yeah. my body in you know, into a twisted pose, or I'll go into tree pose, or I'll put my hands together just in namaste, just in prayer, yeah. just, just so that way I can get some sense of- So that you can come back to your grounding, your- grounding. Yeah, wow, how beautiful. Grounding and peace and being in the moment. And yoga taught my body to decompress, and the, it taught me how to live with my pain. And it taught me how to just be in this moment, which is what everyone with PTSD needs. needs. Yeah. So how did you discover you'd had PTSD? Because, um, yeah, that's kind of a, it, I feel like that word sometimes gets thrown out so easily, but people don't understand it until they experience it. 
you know, but then again, I feel that PTSD can be anything from emotional to physical to spiritual. I mean, everyone can have any type of PTSD, but not really be aware that it's happening to them. When did you actually realize you were suffering from PTSD? When you, when you were in the, when you were grounded, that's when you were able to look back and be like, oh my goodness, I've had PTSD. Or did a doctor, doctor tell you that? No, the doctors told me I had PTSD. And they also told me, this is going to be something you have for the rest of your life. You need to figure out how to manage it for the rest of your life. Because at that point, it was something long term. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, and I'm going to figure it out. Because if you tell me I have something, I'll figure out a plan. That's just who I am. That's but, great. But initially, their plan was to throw medicine. Of course. <laughs> you know, and... Um, yeah. And in the beginning, you know, I had this, uh, I had the doctor for the pain management mm -hmm. who, who threw tons of medicine at me. Yeah. And because they want to cover everything up. And one of my friends said, go for mindfulness-based stress reduction. And Is that like a type of therapy? You see a therapist for that? What is that? No. What is that? No, is that like a yoga physical? No, it's, it's like a six week course. So you can look for it online, um, anywhere in the country, a mindfulness based stress reduction course to teach you um, how to be mindful with your pain. And John Cabot Zinn started the very first mindfulness based stress reduction. There are tons of books out, of, out on it. He's, he's the founder of MBSR. That's awesome. And so I, I went to an MBSR over at Duke University because that's where I live. And I decided I'm not gonna be on any of this medicine. If I'm gonna go, I'm not gonna be on any of this pain medicine. I'm gonna go so that way I can feel everything and I can learn the most I can. Get that mind-body connection. Absolutely. So I took myself off of everything I went to I went to the MBS. Thank you. I went to the MBSR for six weeks, and that's where my yoga practice truly started. Because part of the MBSR teaches you how to do yoga. It teaches you mindful walking. It teaches you how to sit and just be. What's mindful walking? Mindful walking is just walking walking in a circle, uh, putting your foot down, and just being kind to the to the earth. Wow. And just thinking about... So really, you know, literally grounding yourself. Absolutely. It's amazing. It's amazing. Shelly, I got to try that. I'm going to try that when we're done with this. I'm going to go for a walk, walk in a circle on the grass and, and connect with the earth. Absolutely. Absolutely. So how did, what, what kind of feelings do you get when you do that? Well, how does that help heal? How does that come together? Well, when you're thinking about putting one foot in the other, in front of the other, you're not thinking about everything. That's Anything going on. else. You're right there in the present moment. Yeah. So you're not thinking about, you know, who's judging you or you judging someone else or judging the experience. You're just thinking about what is. You're not thinking about your pain. You're letting everything go. And the key to being happy, this is this is the key. Don't tell everybody. It's <laughs> letting things go. Yes. The more you let things go, the happier you will be. I agree 100%. Yeah. And there, and we have to make sure that we say that there's a difference between letting things go and giving up because sometimes people are like, well, then that's giving up. Cause I've heard people say that. I'm like, no, when I've, when I've talked about letting things go, I'm like, no, it's not giving up. It's actually being free when you do that. How, can, yeah. how would you tell someone as a life coach, if someone said, well, is that giving up? No, so I like to talk about it from the perspective of forgiveness. Because that's a huge, huge, huge. That's a huge topic that I talk about. So a lot of people are really challenged with forgiveness. They're like, I can't forgive because if I hold on to this grudge. That means I have power. Mm -hmm. But you could be walking around with all of that anger and all of that angst and all of that negativity. But yeah. the one that you're upset with is sitting at Starbucks and having a coffee with their friend and right <laughs> doing doing their day and they're not thinking about it at all. I know you're sitting but, there bottled up angry and they're enjoying their life and yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. It's raising your cortisol, which is increasing your, your stress, stress levels. Yeah. 
which is wearing down all of your um, your health. Because yeah. the more cortisol you have, the worse your health is going to be. Totally. So if you're in the process of trying to give that up, it's letting go of the anger and they don't even have to know. <laughs> they don't have to know. It could be your little secret. And <laughs> you could practice forgiveness in your house and you don't have to pick up the phone and say, hey, Joe, by the way, I'm going I to- I forgive you. <laughs> I know they're like, huh, what are you talking about? I didn't even know you were mad at me. Yeah. It could just be what you do in your privacy. I love that. Yeah. So then in the six week course um, of mindfulness stress um, rehabilitation course that you took, that was able to help you ground yourself. And then was it within that six week course that you realized what PT, that you, that you could cure yourself of that PTSD? Uh, okay. I, I was that like, like, a, like an awakening that you had overnight where you're like, you know what? I got this. Mindfulness based stress reduction was my intro into not taking any more of those meds which the doctors just cover up. Got it. So I don't, I, I don't ever use the word cure because I live with, I live with PTSD. So if I go into, uh, if I went into an arena and there were flickering lights all over the place and sirens, I would probably be a little bit reactive because that's how mine, you know, is triggered. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to go away. I just need to make sure that I put things in place where I'm not going to be reactive. Um, so I don't use that word cure. So how would you handle that? Let's say you're going to a concert and um, you're with your daughter and you're, you're, I don't know, maybe it's a rave. I have no idea. I'm, and all of a sudden lights go out. What, how do you help yourself from your automatic brain neurons that are want to, that want to fire? Like how do okay. you actually bring that firing down? If I went, if I wanted to go to a concert and I knew there were going to be lights, I would make sure that I was with people that I felt safe with. Okay. That's great. That's really good yeah. advice too. And, you know, another thing that I, that, you know, I might recommend is to, you know, um, just put on clothes that you feel comfortable in, you know, so mm -hmm. that way, if you have an anxiety attack, you're not you're going to want to go like this, you know, just put on something loose. So that way. You're not going to, you know, have an anxiety attack and just want to rip. Yeah, rip start that. sweating and you can't breathe. Yeah. So prepare in case that happens so that way it doesn't happen. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Be mindful all the time with everything. Yeah, but I don't put myself in those situations, quite honestly. That's good. I don't need, I don't need to go to a concert, especially right. during COVID. Oh, yeah. No kidding. <laughs> So then how did all of this come together for you to become a life coach? That's, that's incredibly impactful. So yoga has been hugely important in my life. And um, I went, well, let, let me just back up. So during my accident, I, I also went to school to become a social worker. I, I went to get my, I went to get my degree in social work. I during your my, accident? You mean right before your accident or after your accident? As part of my healing, I went to oh, get gotcha. a degree. I went to get a degree in social work. Wow! And I started, you know, doing some papers on how I have been, you know, I have found yoga incredibly healing for me, and I started educating other people on that. And after graduation, I decided I didn't want to work with people who were still in the problem-solving phase. I wanted to work with people who were in the solution phase. Uh -huh. So I went on to earn a certification in life coaching. That's incredible. And I combined the yoga and the, and the life coaching together. So people who come to me get kind of a yogic feel to their life coaching. And there's always some, some form of breath work that we do together. That's so rad. You know, it's just really amazing how we're all aligned right now. The woman I interviewed before you was talking about Kundalini yoga and how everything, oh, yeah. is, everything is breathing, you know? And I, I told her that I actually, I tried it a couple of times, but I got dizzy and she's like, well, you got to continue to do it. So I was like, okay, maybe I wasn't breathing well, but I know that my breathing now because of yoga and because of things that I've experimented with, um, breathing exercises definitely helped me. And a lot of people don't know how to breathe. And that's the most, that's the most important thing that I've seen going around, around 
going around is that people really they forgot how to breathe naturally it's really interesting because they have they carry the stress within them it's like a knot of stress and they forget how to breathe yeah you know when people say oh i can't do yoga i say gina how to breathe and they go yeah and i go okay so then if you could breathe mindfully then you're doing yoga that's it because if they could sit and they can breathe mindfully, then they can shift everything in their body. Yeah, they can. And I bear, just recently, like a week ago, I was reading something about how even when if you breathe um, the right side versus the left side of your nose, it's hitting different parts of your immune system. I'm like, I didn't yeah. even know that. Are you serious? So <laughs> make sure I'm clear here. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's awesome. Wow. Well, this has been an amazing interview. Our time went so fast. My goodness. You're very motivating. How can people find you, Shelly? They can find me on Instagram, Shelly.Grossman, C-H-E-L-L-I-E dot Grossman. And they can go to my website, TwistedTreeCoaching.com. And they can email me at C-H-E-L-L-I-E dot Shelly at TwistedTreeCoaching.com. That's amazing. <clears throat> I'm going to make sure I, that's going to be posted up there as well. Thank you so awesome. much for your time and for sharing your, your beautiful, wonderful journey. Hello to North Carolina. I hope one day I'll get to visit and we'll be talking soon. Awesome, Lena. Thank you. Thank you, Shelly.